So if somebody is really starting to think about, I'd like to, like, like to bring more media, more PR into my strategy, mm -hmm. where would you send them first? What, what, what first steps would you ask them to do? Well, I actually did this on my, in my talk last weekend as well. And if you're listening or watching, this is what I want you to do is uh, pick up your phone, go to Facebook and go uh -huh. to um, your town's Facebook group, your alumni Facebook group, anything non-entrepreneurial, uh -huh. non-entrepreneurial. And write this, who here works in media? Who here has a podcast? Who here works in television? You will get a response from perfect strangers because perfect strangers actually want to help you. And most people think media is pretty exciting, especially if they're on yeah. social media. Yeah. They will help you. And the reason I know this is because not only have I been telling my clients to do this forever and it always works, but this is how I actually found um, a book agent when I was looking for a book for my cookbook yeah, is I ate strangers. Like, I mean, I grew up in the town that I live in. My parents live there. My cousins are there. Eight per people who were not connected to anybody I knew were like, Oh, my friend's a book agent. You can talk to her and connected me. Oh, that's brilliant. So, and it's, it's such so, an easy space that we're all in already. Yeah, exactly. And people want to help. So if you do this, tag both of us and post about it and let us know how yeah. it goes. Hello, my extraordinary women friends. I often say that visibility is the fire in our brand. For years, I've been teaching my clients to get visible because I firmly believe this is what ignites our businesses and our impact. Today, we are diving deep into this concept with someone who's not only mastered the art of gaining visibility, but has also helped others achieve the same. Beth Nidick. Best expertise in capturing the spotlight is unparalleled. Her clients, too, have enjoyed the limelight with features in Forbes and Entrepreneur, Inc., ABC, CBS, NBC, Fast Company, Business Insider, Drew Barrymore, Sherry Shepard, and many more. Today, Beth is here to share invaluable insights on how you can find your next media opportunities and even more importantly, how to convert that visibility into dollars for your business. So grab a pen and paper and get ready to jot down actionable strategies that could revolutionize the way you approach visibility and media engagement. Let's meet Beth Nidick and learn how to turn the spotlight into a powerful tool for business growth. Well, welcome to Extraordinary Women Radio, Beth. It is great to have you here today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here and have a conversation with you. I really appreciate what you do and what you put out in the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And where, where are you joining us from today? New Jersey. New Northern Jersey. New Jersey. Right outside yeah. New York. So as my Jersey-ness will come through this conversation, you'll, you'll see <laughs> I it. I love it. <laughs> I totally love it. Totally love it. Well, it's great to have you here. And I'm super excited to hear your stories and your wisdom. You've been featured on, like, you've been featured on some really big deal places. So from Oprah to Forbes to Tory Burch to appearing on the Drew Barrymore show and the Tonight <laughs> Show. I'm like, oh my God, when I was reading your bio, that's really amazing. I appreciate that. I was one of those kids that w just always wanted to work in TV, always wanted to be on TV. I just love the medium. And that first day that I stepped on the back, you know, into like a set, it just felt like home. You know, when people talk about like what they're supposed to be doing in their life, working yeah. in the TV industry and helping my clients get into the TV business is really where I'm supposed to be. Oh, and it's so cool. It's so super cool. So how, what did you know as a, as a young girl that, I mean, what was there for you? What, what did you know? Well, I did, I acted as a little kid, you know, oh, I went did. to like, I did my, my parents sent me, I think I was eight or nine to like a premier acting camp in the Catskills where Sarah Jessica Parker was a counselor. Oh my god. Adam Levine was a camper. And like oh I could I could drop names of all these people that were there. I can't sing, so I didn't I didn't get in the big roles because it was a lot of musicals, but it was acting camp. And it was that okay. creative sense. Um and since I couldn't sing, I knew TV was my medium instead of the mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really learned it's a it's such a collaborative and creative effort to put something together that people will continue to watch. Like oh, commercials so have always cool. been the enemy. I, I think I always understood that from a young age. Okay. So you, you, you've got to do that early on in, in your life. How did the next evolution of you in, you know, stepping into the world of media and PR, how did that evolve for you? 
um, you know, I was in and out doing, com I did some commercials and I would do like local plays. Um, you know, I tried to be in the choir in high school and they told me no, or stand in the back kind of thing. Um, uh, my next, I think the next time I actually really felt that I was making a difference in my career and my step for my step forward was, um, in college, I was in a, a comedy store, which is in LA and Jay Leno was on stage, you know, doing a bit. He was not supposed to be there. And I was like in the front, in the front row. And he started making fun of my girlfriend and I, and he was like, what are you going to do with a communications degree? Ha ha ha. So after the set, I went over to him to be like, I, you're going to work for me one day. I had such balls. I'm from Jersey, you know? So I literally <laughs> went over to him and I was like, so nice to meet you. You know, it, it was so funny. And he was like, what are you going to do with that communication degree? And I was like, uh, you're going to work for me one day. And he was like, well, why don't you come work for me first? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, come see me in the studio tomorrow. You know, let's talk about it. So I went to the oh studio the next day. I met him and I worked, I interned there for, I don't know, a couple months. Um, and I, and got I got ballsy. to be Jersey. Yeah. I, got, uh, I got to be in the writer's room with him. I got to sit in with producers meetings. You know, I, because I had a sense of what it was like and coming from the theater world and kind of understanding what it's like to tell stories and what it's like to be in front of people. Um, mm -hmm. They found what my opinions, kids' opinions were really valuable. Um, oh and I gosh. got to do that. And when they came to New York, I got to, to support them while they were here. And I got to know Jay really well. And I got to see what being an executive producer really looked like and what all the parts of the business really look like and understand where I wanted to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you didn't stay in the, in the television world then you decided to go out and more into the media and the PR side of things. Well, after that, I worked, I did some movie, I worked on some movie stuff. I worked a little bit on empire records and casting. I was like, I'm going to be a casting agent until I yeah. realized that you sit in dark rooms talking to people all day. I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I did not. Um, but I came back to New York after school. I worked for MTV in special services and I worked with all the award shows that, you know, the music awards and movie awards. I got to work on the back end of those and be in studio. And that was like Carson Daly days. So I worked, at, wow. I did a lot and then I did freelance TV for a long time. Um, and then I actually got married and had kids and I stayed home for a little <laughs> bit. Um, and then w when it was like, Oh, I cannot stay home and like have lunch with these ladies. All that, like that made me crazy. Like I have to do something. Uh -huh. um, the availability of Facebook was just starting to come in. Like it was, mm -hmm. you know, you, blogging was actually like a big thing. Mommy blogging was a big thing. And I was like, well, this is I'm like really 2008 ish. Techie. Well, this was like 2000, yeah, 2006, 7, 8. Um, yeah, I started yeah. a blog, like mom in the suburbs. I don't know. It was something like, like that. But I knew, how, I knew how the TV industry worked and I understood exactly. how you brands had that insider worked. viewpoint. Exactly. So I started working with brands and I started um, understanding what I could bring to a TV segment. It took, you know, I didn't have the, com the, the confidence I have now, obviously I didn't have then. Um, yeah. But when... I started understanding how I could make money by being a blogger and working with brands. I got to be on the, on the chew, which was a show, you know, a TV show. Uh, they actually came out to my house. I worked with Vitamix and the chew and they came out to my house and did like a two day shoot at my house with my kids and my husband, all the neighborhood kids came over. Um, and I really leaned into that until I realized how much more I like talking about business and I like talking about food. Mm. You know, I was, I actually have like a trained, a trained health coach. So mm -hmm. after I was done talking about broccoli, I was like, I was done telling women to stop eating chocolate and start <laughs> eating broccoli. Like I had enough of it. Actually, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. The catalyst was I was helping my friend Wendy with her business. She was like, Hey, can you come to the, to the library and just sit with me for a little bit and kind of help me, you know, do what I was doing. She was had all these things to do that her coach told her. And at that point I was like, Coach what? Like, I didn't even know the industry. And afterwards, she said to me, Beth, you help me more than my $20,000 a month coach. And I was like, you're 20000 what? Like, I didn't honestly <laughs> had no idea what she was talking about. I came home, told my husband. He's like, let's look into this. Let's and be a coach. Like, oh, I'm going to be a coach. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no. I do not want to be a coach. I'm a strategist. I'm really about strategy yeah. and how you can take yeah. what you've created and where you want to go and find the strategy to get there around yeah. media. because. 
I know there's thousands of thousands and thousands and thousands of women out there that just don't want to do the bro marketing or they don't want to have another webinar, but they understand that if they just show up as themselves and communicate what their heart's telling them and what their soul needs to say, people will listen. And you can yeah. do that on fun things like live TV. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So we even have a, one of my trainings is soul speaks from the stage. So it's like learning to really speak from your soul and like letting this light of you come through so people can feel your presence and um, letting yes. your stories come to life. So we are so aligned in all of what we're talking about here. I love it. I totally love it. So this is how you really found into the yourself into this role of, of, of supporting businesses with their messaging, getting their stories out in the world and really landing in, in media and, and being out in the, you know, getting their voices oh, yeah. out in bigger ways. Yeah. hundred percent. So I'm a Pisces. Uh -huh. So a lot of, a lot of mine is um, communicating feeling. Uh -huh. And when I learned and when I really understood about media and that your marketing is about sales and understanding pain while mm -hmm. media is communicating a feeling and inspiring and inspiring, empowering, and educating an audience. That's mm. when I really felt and really understood how I was supporting my clients in getting yeah. to that piece. Yeah. Yeah. And I might argue a little bit on the marketing side of it, but that's, that's just because <laughs> <point. laughs> I do fine. think we it's like, we want to feel it, right. We want to feel it no matter yes. whether it's so, but I think that's, but that's where the magic lies is when, when our audiences can feel what we're bringing yeah. out into the world and can feel, you know, that desire, that change that we're wanting to create. And, you know, I, I think that each one of us is put on this earth to make a difference with the gifts of who we are. And it can be really, it can be really powerful when you, when you communicate from that perspective, from that place. Like, oh yeah. My gifts have saved me. You know, we've yeah. all had, and you know, we can have the trauma conversation too. <laughs> you know, we've all had our big T's and our little T traumas. Yeah. And I, I would say that I have a really strong resilience bone. Yeah. And that, yeah. And, but that being able to communicate and being able to just feel right. I know you probably too have, you speak to, you speak to women all the time that are stuck behind this wall of supposed to be, yeah. well, I'm supposed yeah. to be this way. I'm supposed yeah. to be that way. I actually was at a conference last weekend and there was a flood in the hotel uh -huh. that they hadn't cleaned up really well. So this woman was telling me how the carpet in her her uh, hotel room was wet, but she was staying in the room because it was fine. <laughs> I was like, you're what? Like, that's wow. okay for you? That's not okay. Yeah. That's not okay no. for me. No, that's not okay. But that's okay so, for so thousands of women that feel like that. They, they sit back and just accept the way yeah. things are versus saying, you know, where's my boundaries on this and stepping forward into this. Exactly. So, I was cool. flabbergasted to be honest. Yeah. 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 So how has me, how has um, seeking out media opportunities really reshaped you? I mean, I, you've given us some of these examples here, but as you stepped into this new space, how's that really reshaped you and helped you build what you've built? It's allowed me to get the feedback that I, that we don't normally get. Mm. You know, I think that a lot so of times, more. so a lot of times I'll like, for example, so I spoke at this conference last week and I got great feedback. That was amazing. Best ever. Da, da, da. You know what my question was to my friends that were in the room? What did I do wrong? What uh, didn't work? Mm -hmm. And and they're like, no, you were, I'm like, tell me what you think I could have done better. Besides talk slower. I know I talk fast. I work on it. It doesn't happen. I'm working on that piece. <laughs> I talk very fast. It's just, I get excited, but it really, TV gave me that instant feedback because people are mean. Oh. And, I, the fir and my first couple TV appearances, I would get, you have a peanut face. That was a good one. Cause I have a long face. I look like a peanut. You know, you talk too fast. You have an accent. And I was like, I have a jerk. I have an ac I'm in New York TV. I have an accent or I'm on, you know, I was on Dr. Oz <laughs> and that kind of stuff. But I got, strangers tell, telling me about my appearance, the way I stood, the shoes I had, like really. And, and my response is what taught me how to be me. Because mm. my response was, oh, okay, who cares? Like, I don't care. Those, yeah. It didn't, it never bothered me. The peanut face I actually thought was funny. And I did some uh -huh. memes about it that I made of myself, <laughs> but it allowed me the space to like receive outside criticism that was meant to be Ooh. mean. And to yeah. know that I did not need to take it in. 
and I can Ooh, laugh at it. That's really step. good. In the world of entrepreneurship, where we all have these these voices that go on in our head that tell us, you know, you're not enough, or you're not, you know, you know, who are you to step into this, you know, this message, or who are you um, to 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 you know think what you're doing is making a difference? I mean, it's just so many stories that can happen, right? And so that resiliency muscle that you're talking about here, that you mm -hmm. were able to build early on, really enabled you to turn those 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 inner critic mes messages down. A thousand percent. And I was, I was brought up with this, this teachings, I guess, you know, my, my parents are entrepreneurs themselves. So I had a great mm -hmm. example. Um, mm -hmm. And the teach, the teachings that I got for them were really around stories that you tell yourselves, because mm -hmm. I don't really have that internal conversation anymore. And it's funny that you Good said that you. because I actually had a conversation with a client today. And I was like, we all have that, like, wait, what am I doing? And my, my internal body goes, eh, just hit send because yeah. I trained myself to do that, right? But we have the story, yeah. uh, we, we have all these stories and you can either listen to the stories or tell them to shut up. And my dad told me to tell him to shut up when I was eight years old. That's like, awesome. Honestly, he really, I was really brought up that way. I have different yeah. stories, different, not, I have different things, I promise. I don't have, like, yeah. we don't have our thing. But I yeah. think that we too often allow those stories to seep in and then we yeah. have to work at those stories. Or we, and I, instead of working at them, you just have to, they, release them or ignore them or tell them to go yeah. away yeah. is the way that I've yeah. always done it. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what really I, I tend me. to do is like, thank you, but no, thank you. Yeah. I've that got, doesn't serve yeah. me. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know you're trying to look out for me, but I've got this. So yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So that's cool. That's really, that's a really good skill set. So if for any of our listeners that have that, that inner voice that kind of shows up for them, what, what words of wisdom would you give them? I think there's, it's going back to the story. It's like, you can create a story around something. Say, yeah. say, Cammy, you were like, you know what, Beth, you're really nice, but I don't want to have you. I don't have room for you right now mm -hmm. to be on, to be on the show. You, that yeah. could have been to be, I'm not good enough. I, you know, my business sucks. I must have a hopeful All brand. I should stories. go jump in the water or right. That's the story I could create about it. Yeah. Or I can say, okay, just not now. Right. Yeah. So which it's, exactly. it's a I think it's a decision rather than letting those emotions take over you. Mm, so when you think good. about it, or or even like, or you didn't call me back. You didn't mm -hmm, call me back because mm -hmm. you don't want to be my friend. Or you, I can make up this whole thing where I could go, well, she just didn't call me back. And when yeah. you work in the PR space, when you work in the media space, you, rejections is gotcha. part, of the, yeah. part of the whole yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. when I say to my clients, no means not now, and they can really take that in, that's when I find success with them because they can pitch and pitch and pitch and ask and call and DM and do all the stuff without any of those stories coming up so they can be yeah. successful in, in the other mm. areas of their business too. I love that. I love that. To keep going for the yeses and just, yeah. you know, don't worry about those no's because that's going to happen. It don't really matter. Yeah. 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 Um, so if somebody is really starting to think about, I'd like to, like, like to bring more media, more PR into my strategy. Mm -hmm. Where would you send them first? What, what what first steps would you ask them to do? Well, I actually did this on my in my talk last weekend as well. And if you're listening or watching, this is what I want you to do is uh, pick up your phone, go to Facebook and go uh -huh. to um, your town's Facebook group, your alumni Facebook group, anything non-entrepreneurial, uh -huh. non-entrepreneurial. And write this, who here works in media? Who here has a podcast? Who here works in television? You will get a response from perfect strangers because perfect strangers actually want to help you. And most people think media is pretty exciting, especially if they're on yeah. social media. Yeah. They will help you. And the reason I know this is because not only have I been telling my clients to do this forever and it always works, but this is how I actually found um, a book agent when I was looking for a book for my cookbook. Yeah. As I ate strangers, like, I mean... I grew up in the town that I live in. My parents live there. My cousins are there. Eight per people who were not connected to anybody I knew were like, oh, my friend's a book agent. You can talk to her and connected me. Oh, that's brilliant. So, and it's, it's such so, an easy space that we're all in already. Yeah, exactly. And people want to help. So if you do this, tag both of us and post about it and let us know how yeah. it goes. Oh, gosh, that's so good. I love that tip. I totally <laughs> love that pit tip. So over the years, I have been really fortunate to get to work with some really great PR people. Um, back in my corporate days, um, I did, I got to work with a lot of um, like people in like Ogilvy and large, you know, large companies oh, like wow. that. 
So it was really amazing that I got to have that exposure. Um, and I know what you do today is really, you know, your unique, what you, how you approach social media or how you approach, not social media, but how you approach media (laughs) is, is, um, so uniquely indifferent. Um, tell us more about your perspective on working with the media. I think a lot of people that are out in there in my space are really just focused on getting the pitch out and connecting to the media. I'm really, Mm -hmm. honestly, that's not the hard part. The hard Mm -hmm. part is what you do after you're on and how you make money from it. Yes. There's two different types of media. (laughs) There's credibility media and revenue media. Yeah. And I, you know, big national TV, big national things. That's credibility media. Yeah. The regional local stuff where you're actually talking one-on-one to your clients or you're really in front of that real ideal client, that's where you're going to make money. Because I always say, if you show up for an interview without a plan, it's like getting behind the wheel of a car and not knowing how to drive. Mm. You have to show up intentionally. Like yep. if you're on a, if you're doing an interview for a podcast and they ask you to give them questions, mm-hmm. don't just say whatever you want to talk about yeah, or let's just have an organic Right. Well, let's just have an organic conversation. I'm like, please, no more organic conversations. Great. Let's have an organic conversation about the four pillars of my business. And I'm going to intertwine the things that are in my lead magnet so that by the time I get to the lead magnet offer, which should not be at the end of the conversation, it should be middle beginning of the conversation. The audience is still listening because you know how they drop off and they can be in action because you've empowered and inspired them so much by your storytelling, how you're talking about it, you know, that inspire, inspire, and <laughs> inspire, empower, educate. Those are my three things yeah. um, on the, on the comp in the conversation at all so that they can then get into your ecosystem, into your funnel and then yeah. pay you because yeah. that to me is the most important part because you know, working with Ogilvy and big PR people, PR is not usually a money-making activity, but with my clients and in my programs, I make it a money-making activity. Yeah. Yeah. I totally love that. I so love that. It's it really interesting. I do, um, I actually incorporate some, some, um, a framework that we used back in the day um, <laughs> when I was working with Ogilvy. We took about 160 people in my company through um, a training, um, a year-long training to, to build them up as ex- experts in our company. And it was about mm-hmm. building their, um, their content strategy. So mm-hmm. we had a, a message map, four, four boxes with a core message in the middle. I, I call it your one message for the world. Um, and I pulled that out of my archives of my old corporate days years ago cool. and, and reintegrated that into the work that I do with my clients when they're you know starting to speak and when they're starting to get out and be seen and be heard with their messaging. Yeah. It's like, what's that core message? Um, and I think it's so important what you're saying here is, is how does that tie right back to how you serve your clients and what you offer and what you're, you know, what you're selling to the world so that you exactly. do t- tie the revenue to it. So selling is a good thing, not a bad thing. <laughs> it is a really good thing. That's it's, really it's an good important thing. part of us, our work as, as entrepreneurs, yes. we can't, su- <laughs> we can't succeed without that. So it's really important yeah. to just really fall in love with sales. Um, and it, you're doing it with a storytelling approach, exactly. the way you're, you're talking about here. And I think that's really, really good. So important. Um, as you think through, um, you know, this journey that you, how you approach media differently, what challenges and advantages have you encountered in, you know, in defining what that looks like for yourself and for your clients? Um, well, me be, myself being a former TV producer and a TV lover has definitely been an advantage. You know, yeah, I totally understand. That's huge. The, yeah, well, I, you know, when talking to a, uh, somebody, let's say, Right now, I'm trying to book something on the Drew Barrymore show. I'm going to put it out there. Uh-huh. I'm trying to book something for Women's History Month for women's entrepreneurship. They, the producer that I'm talking to, knows that I'm that I've been in the industry, that I've been in his shoes, mm-hmm. that I've been somebody who's sitting at Friday at 11:30 p.m. still trying to find a a, a guest to come on Monday at nine o'clock in the morning. So right. when I when I create a conversation or I create a relationship with a media ex media professional, they already know that I know who they are and what mm-hmm. it takes. Yeah. Um, or to put me on live TV, they know that I'm uh-huh. not going to freeze. They know I'm going to be there. Yeah. And then my clients get to understand, no, Beth's been there. Cause I, I also currently still do live TV all the time. 
Um, okay. She does it for herself and she can really hold my hand and understand what I'm going to, where I'm going to need to be in my life, in my yeah. mind and in my heart yeah. so that I can successfully navigate this. Yeah. Um, no, it's totally, but, that's a total advantage. I can see yeah. why. I mean, cause you've been there, you know exactly what they're going through and um, you know how to serve their need. And in a way that's filling them with the stories that they need. Um, and you, you know, it's just, as I can see why it's just a brilliant um, opportunity for, for your clients to work with you like that. Yeah, that's what I was really trying to figure out because before um, 2020, you know, I had a PR agency, I was doing that kind of stuff, but I had, I was speaking all over the country talking about mm -hmm. my cocktail book and, um, and sales and I was in that business space. Um, but really thinking about, okay, so what do I bring to the table? Was my yeah. experience is what I bring to the table um, yeah. to be complete. You know, I can't not say things because I'm from Jersey, but like, it makes me crazy when I see somebody like they got one article in like a Marie Claire, or they got one article in a magazine and now they teach other people how to, uh, how to get PR for their business, you yeah, know, or they've yeah. never been in the media. And I'm like, why do you think you're an expert? in media, if you've done six media things, and now you're going to, yeah. you're going to sell a, a $400 course on the framework that somebody else taught you. Yeah. You know, my my yeah. client, I actually have a, I had a new client recently. Yay. She's amazing. You know, when you've got good, when you have a new client and she like hits it out of the park over and over and over again, she said to me, what does your clients walk away with when they're done working with you? Or when they're, mm -hmm. when your group program is over, what do those, those people walk away with? And I said, besides media, they walk away with being the people that they thought they could be, but they didn't know how to get to. Mm, and I say that beautiful. because I want, I want the audience to understand. And honestly, for me, it, it helps it to say out loud, like, it's not all about the, where we go. It's the journey. It's how you're creating a different, a different space in your life so that you can create a different outcome for your life. And I, yeah. and I'm, and I support you on that. While we do really fun things, like get to talk to you or get to be on TV or get to be on the stage, um, I'm, yeah. I'm into having fun. And I just think yeah. sitting in front of your computer all day by yourself isn't that much fun. Yeah. But when you can communicate yeah. what you're about and who you are to the world, that's a lot more fun. Yeah, totally. A lot more fun. And it's, I think what you're talking about is who do we become in this next version of who we are, right? Or yeah. where we're going. And um, there's stretches in there and there's... Um, this next evolution of, of our messages mm -hmm. and next evolution of how we show up and do these fun things. So yeah. I love this so much. I really love it. So what strategies have you employed to ensure your brand is heard and that your brand is recognized in this very crowded digital space that we have? I think, you know, we all know there's a lot of noise out there. So what there's are you doing for your brand in that perspective? I ask my friends for help. I really do. Ooh. I ask my friends for help. I ask people for things. Hey, can I be on your podcast? You know, hey, I see you're, you don't have to, someone talking about publicity in your podcast. Can I come on and do that? I'm, yeah. my, most of what I've gotten between mm -hmm. Jay, um, my job at MTV, I literally saw a guy in a bar. I was living in Hoboken at the time. He, he had MTV networks on his t-shirt and he was sitting behind me at the bar and I was like, excuse me, do you work for MTV? And he said, yes. And I was like, I'd love to get a job there. How do I get a job there? And he goes, oh, I work in HR. Do you want to come in next week? Like literally oh my ask gosh. for what you want. I yeah. wanted to be on the Drew Barrymore show. I told everybody I met that I wanted to be on the Drew Barrymore show before I was yeah. on. Yeah. And I was on. So my, yeah. with that question for me is like, if you aren't telling people where you're trying to go continuously, unabashedly you're not going to get there. It's great to make plans and try to figure it out, but you can't do it on your own. And I think when so, you yeah. put it out in the, in the universe, the mm -hmm. universe probably laughs a little bit first. And then yep. she comes back and says, if you do the work, you're going to get there. I'll make sure I'll show you the way. Oh, so good. That's just so, the so way good. I live. I love it. I love it so much, Beth. So where can um, people learn more about you and your work? And do you have anything coming up anytime soon? I do. You can find me everywhere at Beth Nidick. I'm on all the platforms. Um, my next my next group program is coming up in March. It's called the Fame Formula. It takes entrepreneurs from undiscovered to unforgettable. We not only show you how to integrate the Fame Formula into your business, but we show you how to make actual cash for, cash from all the exposure. 
Excellent. Excellent. And the final question I always close with are, what are three pearls of wisdom you'd like to leave with us today? My big one's always that you yourself, only you can create your own opportunity for success. Nobody else can do it for you. No coach, not either of us. You have to actually be able to do it. Um, My second thing is your kids are listening. My kids are in college. Um, My kids, I have two boys in college. They go to the same college, which is near my house, which is lovely. But they always say to me all the time, like, well, I was listening when you were talking to your client, or I learned this when I, I heard you on the phone when you were working. Like, they're actually listening. So if we have yeah. any moms who have little kids, your kids are listening. And it's amazing what your kids will be able to accomplish because yeah. they've listened to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and and the even third as one they grow always, older, even as they grow older, oh. they're still listening because my son is 40 and he, <laughs> he's still um, listening. He's still listening. And every he's like, he's, he listened to something I, I did the other day on social. He's like, mom, that was so good. <laughs> like, oh, I like that. that. So good. I know. I just made my heart go, grow, you know, five sizes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have a junior and se- a junior and a sophomore right now. And my younger one said to me, he's like, whenever I think that I can't do something, I remember that you created a very successful business out of the living room. Yeah. Yeah. And when yeah. I have a hard time or I have a hard day, I remember that and it helps me keep going. It yeah. just does. Yeah. Um, but the third one is like, please, I'm going to get close to the camera. Please, please ask people for what you want. Enroll them in helping you and you're going to accomplish it. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> Beth, I am so glad we had this conversation. What a blast. What a good conversation. And what great tips you gave us. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. This was so fun. And don't forget, go on your Facebook page and tag us so we can support you. Totally, totally, totally. Thanks, Beth. (laughs) Thank you.